I'm going to try and fix this thing. It's a digital TV receiver and it's not powering up properly. It's basically dead. We'll have a look, see if I can fix it. Let's get this thing apart. Not much hold the covers on. Once it's apart, then I'll power it up. Actually, I'll show you what it's doing. The camera might be able to see it, I'm not sure. It's a fairly old unit, I'm not sure the year. Hope you have some clues inside, just tell me when it was made. My dad's unit. TV wouldn't work anymore because it's got an older TV and it would put the light on this thing to be able to watch the TV. Okay. Any clues? Is that 3811? Is that 2011 or is it 2409? Could be 2009. Look at any other clues I might be able to see for dates. And that serial number starts with 11 as well. Can't say exactly when it's made. Power this thing up and we'll have a look and see what's actually going on and we'll try and determine. What's happening? I think I can see what's wrong already though. Let's plug it in. I might turn my lighting down so you can see. Yeah, probably won't be able to catch you on camera. We'll see here we go. You see that pulsing? LED there, it's just flicking on and off. It means the power supply is trying to start up but it can't actually manage it. Also before I forget, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and give us a thumbs up if you like this sort of video. Also check out my merch shelf, got things like this here, my cup and shirts and stuff like that, go and check those out, helps to support the channel. And use my links down below for buy things from like Banggood and places like that, all helps. Here's the switch my power supply to stand inside here, and if you look closely, there's a fairly obvious problem on here. This capacitor here is bulging, big bulge on the top of it. This one here is also looking very slightly domed, not much, just very slight, there's almost nothing in it. So it looks like the power supply needs recapping, so that will probably resolve it. So there's only so four capacitors in there, I think. It should be fairly straightforward. It's like a pretty basic power supply. So you've got a bridge rectifier down here, the opto isolator, obviously you've got the main smoothing filtering. You know, there's not much to this power supply, it looks pretty basic. So it looks like I've actually just slide the power cable out like that. Hopefully I'll unplug this cable here. It's kind of glued in, but I can probably prise it out. There we go. I think I'll do that on two. So that's a 22 microfarad 400 volt if I've got one. I will replace that. And these are probably nothing too hard. Uh, what's that one? 16 volt 1000 microfarad. That other really bold one just there. Anyway, you get this bolt out. I'm going to work on it. I can probably just pop this out. There you go. Four screws. When working on these kinds of gear, and you're working on power supplies, always be mindful that. There could very well be high voltages still present on the capacitors. Um, I'm comfortable working on this kind of thing, but if you're not so familiar with it or you're not really mindful of what you're doing, you could easily injure yourself or potentially kill yourself, I suppose, by getting a zap off one of these things. So I need to make sure these capacitors are discharged and that sort of stuff. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. I'll say that more as a disclaimer to make sure that everyone, if anyone tries to copy what I'm doing, that um, you know, don't do something silly and make a mistake, which I know you shouldn't do, but may not be obvious if you're just watching. So, voltage on here, capacitor across there, got 0.6 volts, that's fine. And that one's dead, so it's not going to be, be a problem anyway, but these are really small values. Yeah, nothing on that one, that's fine. So, we're safe, I'm not going to get a zap off it. So, I'm going to replace these four caps. It's an Arcon, Arcon brand. It's like Fcon. Get it right? Never heard of them. I don't know about these ones. They're the same brand as well. Fcon. Yeah. Isolation looks alright. It's got a slot in here as well, not to isolate the closest point. They've done some stuff and they've done some isolation slots around those posts, mountings. So they try to take some care of the design. Just they seem to use the inferior caps. Oh, mind you, it's been on for, you know, how many years? Probably just aging. Maybe they're alright, I don't know. So let's test these caps and see what we've got here. So I'm going to start with this big one here, the 400 volt cap, which I'm not sure I can fit this other one in, but we'll give it a go. Um, see if it measures okay or not for start. I've already discharged, make sure it's definitely dead. I'm probably too high frequency here. Let's go down to 100 hertz. So we're getting 19.8 microfarad, 12 ohms. Hmm. If I do a, a sim, this is similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. Uh, this is a much larger value. See the resistance is much lower, 1.4 ohms on this one. So that one probably is going bad. Significant difference there. I could check dissipation too, couldn't I? Actually, I'll go through them all first. 
probably don't. So we've got we've got another one over here somewhere. Don't forget in circuit's not the best either. This doesn't necessarily give you the best in circuit readings. 425 microfarad, 0.3 ohms, and that's on 1000 microfarad, which is bulging. This is on the 470 microfarad, 425.3 ohms, it's the same. They're in parallel. They are in parallel. There's an inductor here. So it's going through this inductor. It's obviously part of the filtering circuitry. So it's like it goes through this capacitor, through that inductor, through the other capacitor there for final smoothing, just to help filter out any noise coming through. So they're in parallel, so it's a bit hard to measure those in circuit. And then I've got one more down here. 10 microfarad, 49 ohms. Mm. Well, it's the right value. 49 ohms sounds a bit high though, but again, in circuit it's a bit hard to check. I do have another test that I could try. So I'm going to try doing an in circuit testing with this ESR meter here, which is the Bob Parker ESR meter. I've had this thing a while. Zero out. This is good for doing in circuit testing. The DER5000, although it, it can tell you roughly, but if there's a lot of circuitry around it, it can actually fit the readings. This is saying 8.2 ohms and that big cap there in circuit. Some down here, which I know is bad. Can't read it. I've got this other one on the other side of the filter. 0 0.09, 0.1-ish, that's looking all right. And then we've got this one over here. Three point five ohms, probably okay because it's quite a small cap. So this is a high voltage cap, and it's twenty two microfarads. If you look at the chart on the front here, twenty two microfarad, it's heads up in, in resistance. So it's about three ohms for a two fifty volt cap. So expect it to be more like five to six ohms typically. Yeah, it's, this is just a rough guide. If I compare it to the pass I've got sitting on the bench here, which is a higher value cap but same voltage, that's point six. So there's a big difference between what I've got here as an example cap and the one that's in here. I think that is probably bad. It does feel like it's slightly bulged. This one here is obviously really bad, couldn't read it. But there is some filter circuitry around the area, but it didn't seem to bother us. So it's quite a good little thing to have. I don't even still get these. This is what I used to use all the time before I had the DER. Uh, well, this gives you like a meaningful capacitance measurement and that sort of stuff. Um, it's not so good for in circuit stuff. Whereas this is really good for that. It's nice and quick as well. Which is why it's my second go-to meter. Let's um, replace some capacitors. So it looks like I can go to replace this cap here because it does measure badly. So I think I'll have to change that one as well. Even though this is all I've got, I'm hoping it will actually physically fit. Height-wise, it's probably going to be all right. Yeah, it's close. I hope it will fit. Height-wise, it's very close actually. I wonder if I have to like tip it over sideways or something to get it <laughs> get it fit like that. I might have to figure that out. I might have to stand off the ball. Anyway, we'll get these things out. Let's try and get them up. The soldering gun, which is tangled up in other cables. So I'll do the smaller ones first, get those out of the way. This is going to be noisy. I'll do these one at a time. Plout is marked on the board at least. So that's uh, 1000 microfarad, that one. So that's this one here. This is physically slightly larger, but I think it's going to be right. It's also this awful bloody glue on the board. I should probably do something about that too. This adhesive that I use. I see a lot of old CBs, although it's very effective, it tends to corrode component leaks when it gets old. This has gone quite brown already, so I'm suspicious that this could also be um, a bit of a problem because it, what happens is when it gets old it starts to conduct. It gets conductive, which is exactly what you want on a high voltage power supply, is slightly conductive glue. Gets rid of some of this without cutting through the component leak. Really, it's not getting much movement on it or anything like that, it doesn't really need physical reinforcement. But what it does need is to not be eaten through by the glue. That's that off there. I've got this capacitor to take it anyway, so I'm going to cut through here. Quite nasty stuff, this glue. It gets everywhere. But it's obviously there to serve a function, but um, yeah, to me, eating through the circuitry after you know, 10 years is probably not the best thing. I'd rather just try and remove it, get it off. This isn't too bad. Sometimes it's really quite hard to get off. It's pretty much done. Right, let's put a cap in. It says you've got two holes here for the pin spacing, which is interesting. But you thought ahead about that, so pushing together a little bit. I'll tell you which hole I should be using. Yeah, that fits better. Okay. So that's that one. Let's move on to the next one. I'll test these caps as well once I've got them out. We'll go through that process, see what we end up getting. I think that was a 470, wasn't it? 470. This one over here is the 10 microfarad. That's why I like having a desoldering gun, it makes it a lot easier. Sure you can use wick as well, but uh, I find this generally is pretty good. So that's the 
10, which is this one here. And we've got this big one, which is going to be a challenge, trying to get uh, this other cap in there. I'm fairly sure it's bad. <laughs> now, physically, can I get this in? That's the question. It's close. The other question is whether it's actually going to hit the casing, because it's quite tall. Let's bend it over there like that. We'll sit it back in there and see if it's actually protruding or not. Just look on the top. Oh, that is really close. Probably only a millimetre in it. There's not much. So I'm not particularly happy about that. Now, can I fold it over sideways instead and try and get it cleared that way? It's 400 volts, that's the only thing. Could probably do that. Just spin it around a little bit. Get those leads further apart. I think I might have to do that instead. Lay it on top of the diodes like that. Not ideal, but that's the only real option I've got right now. I have to make sure I've got these lead spacing as far as I can apart because it's you know 340 odd volts goes through there. So I need to make sure they're spaced out nicely. I think I'm going to have to do that. Also, I tend to put some heat shrink on there actually. So I'm just going to stick some sleeving over these just to insulate a little bit. About that much, something like that. So this is going to be exposed leads, which are potentially 300 volts. It's probably a good idea. So I'm not particularly happy about doing it this way, but sometimes you've got no choice but to uh, work around problems. I'm slightly happy with that. Within the power supply as well, so I don't want it to rub or anything else. Check these other components out, so I don't want it sitting against them. I'll probably have to put some glue on it just to hold it all, hold it all down. All right, let's solder it up. Get my fumigator going. I always forget that. Always. So the one leg soldered, then I was check positioning. Let's tighten it up very slightly. Definitely have to glue that one. This is quite a big solder, I'm just trying to get rid of it. This is 1.2mm, which I've had for years. Because it's so big it lasts a long time as well. I've been buying much thinner stuff recently. Because it just works better for a lot of stuff. I'm buying 0.46 and 0.56 sizes in um, so ratio. 62, 36, 2. So it's got some silver in it. That's what I've intended to use instead these days. Always push the components right down to the board. So get it soldered so it's kind of held. Then press the part down so it's held in place and then do the other side. So this should be fixed now, in theory. I should clean these leads off, clean the uh, flux off it. I'll do some measurements in a minute and um, we'll see what we actually got out of those other caps. See how bad they are out of circuit. So I just cleaned all the flux off the board, didn't bore you with that. That should be repaired. I will get the hot glue gun out and glue this in place. Maybe tack these down as well, just because I don't like the way that's wobbling around everywhere. So I was hot gluing this thing now. I'm just going to try and do it around the sides where it's potentially touching things, so it helps to actually hold it away from those things. And it gives it several points of contact as well. Not it really matters that much, but uh, it shows one here too on his diodes. Doesn't really require much. This is why I got this black hot glue, because it looks a lot better. <laughs> looks a lot nicer than normal. I've already unplugged the uh, hot glue gun. So it doesn't draw as much when I finish with it because it's only doing a little bit of glue. So I think that should do it. That's what those caps there held together with that inductor. It's all secured again. That's all held in place there. That's inductor over there as well. That should be all right. That'll do the job, hopefully. All right, I'm fairly sure that'll be fine. Let's move this out of the way so I don't end up gluing the carpet or something. So before we put that back in again, let's retest these other caps and see what we actually get out of the circuit. 
4 in a volt cap, 22 microfarad. Let's see what this comes up as. This is that 1 kilohertz test. 18 microfarad, 1.1 dissipation. Mm-hmm. ESR, about 10 ohms. So significantly different from the other one, which we replaced it with. Let's look at this one here. This is the 1000 microfarad, which is bulging, so obviously bad. 1200 nanofarad, not microfarad, and 0.2k ohms. And dissipation 1.6, so yes, well, you know, the bulging gives it away anyway. This one here, which is a 470. Dissipation 0.3, not too bad, it's getting up a little bit. The capacitance is down slightly. ESR 0.14, yeah, it's not too bad. Probably okay, it's probably not the best quality cap. Next one, which is 10 microfarad, showing 7.7, .7, so that's out tolerance anyway. 6 ohms, but that's not too surprising for a low value cap. 0.3 dissipation, again, it's up there a little bit as well. So I'd say all the caps are probably bad. Which is pretty much what I expected. So let's put this thing back together and see if we get a steady power light. Then we can test it out and find out if we've made it better or not. I'm pretty confident. The um, capacitors on the main board here, they look fine physically. They look all right. There's no obvious signs of problems with those. So I'm not going to go there. Fairly sure they're okay. JFD caps. JFD. We've got SWC over here. Yeah. <laughs> Built down to a price, certainly. So I'm doing what I always do here. Just put the, the screws in, get them lined up. So it's fitted in most of the way, but not tightened down. Once they're all in, then tighten them down. That way you don't get any problems with misalignment. You have to go around and loosen them off again or trying to force a screw in, which is slightly off centered and then cross threading it. Just a better way of doing it. Right, let's plug that in there. Plug the power cable back in. And I'll power this up without the cover on in case we get any magic smoke, because you never know how lucky we get. Let's just tuck it in there. There we go. It's kind of, kind of set away. way. All right, let's power it up and we'll see if we get any bangs, shall we? Plug into a hobby meter. And then we can see what's going on. We'll do this. All right, let's power it up. Ready for the bang? And we have a steady green light. This is a spray, this is boot. There we go. You can't, you can't see it on camera. Now we've got a red light which is off and showing the time. Can you see that there? Turn it back on. Load. There we go, it's working. It's fixed. So it's 0.5 power factor, not wonderful. Only 5 watts though, not too bad. Excellent. So let's put it back together. Now we're confident it's definitely alright. Original glue or something, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. So make sure you remember to subscribe, click the bell icon, and give us a thumbs up for the video. All that sort of stuff helps. Checking out my links down below for the merch and Banggood links and things like that. All those kinds of little things help to find this channel. Help me to buy things from Mailbag and, and best test gear to fix that kind of thing. So, you know, maybe a dollar here or there, but if enough people do it, it all comes, you know, to quite a good amount in the end. It makes it uh, support the channel quite nicely. Also, becoming a Patreon is also very helpful. That helps a lot as well. Combining all the financial income from those little points allows me to buy things like, um, you, you see me recently been doing some videos of PCB Way, you know, featuring their PCBs, or I've been using them. And the money from that helps me to buy things. You know, they sponsor me and they give me a bit of money for that, as well as the free boards. And um, they helps me to buy items. Like I bought some test gear with that twice now. I bought actually I bought three bits of test gear with money I've earned from combined earnings from Patreon and Peace We Way and Banggood. All that combined income helps me to buy things, which is the idea of the channel. So I can use the channel to be self-sufficient and it supports itself, which means it doesn't cost me money to run it. All right. That's fixed. So if you found it interesting, that's another successful repair. I'm very pleased about that. As with my dad, because um, he needs a thing to watch TV. So even better. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. And I'll see you next video. Don't forget the merch. Bye.